Hello dear pupils, welcome to the house of knowledge. My name is Gusinjan Mijidic. As we have received questions on the topic of the video lesson you watched, we prepared answers to the common ones. Uh, the topic of our webinar is extreme sport. So what is extreme sport? The definition of extreme sport is not very clear. Generally speaking, extreme sports are activities that are associated with an adrenaline rush that is felt by the participant. These activities are often dangerous and any mistake could result in injury or even death. Extreme sports are usually done by, uh, done by individuals rather than teams. Extreme sports are grow, growing in popularity, especially among young people. New types of extreme activities continue to be developed. Some argue that the popularity is due to marketing trends. They state that marketing strategies give some extreme sports a dangerous image, even though they do not involve high risk of danger. Regardless, these sports are gaining a large audience and growing in popularity and participation. Magazines, websites, equipment and gear for extreme sports continue to abound. What are the most popular extreme sports? When we think of extreme sports, the first thing that comes to our mind is danger. Indeed, extreme sports include activities that have high levels of inherent peril that can become take a lethal form uh, because just a single slip or hands can land a participant straight in the arms of death or at least severe injury since the extreme sports may involve speed and height hence the participants need highly specialized gear and are required to put high levels of physical exertion not many people have the courage to try out these highly risky sports. Let's have a look at these popular extreme sports. Free solo climbing. Free solo climbing, commonly known as the free soloing, is a form of climbing where the climber or the free soloist doesn't use any safety gear such as ropes, harnesses and other protective gears while ascending. Because of the enormous height of the ascent, fall always means serious injury or death. Uh, there are several achievements already made in free solo climbing, such as the 2 hour and 50 minute ascent of the 2224 foot northwest face route on Yosemite's half done by Alex Honnold. Many great solo climbers met with tragic accidents and died, such as John Becker, Derek Hersey, Vic Hendrickson, Jimmy Ray, Forrester, Jimmy Jewell, Tony Wilmot, Robert Steele, Dwight Bishop, and John Taylor. Two of the great soloists are Alan Robert nicknamed the French Spider-Man and Dan Goodwin, nicknamed Skyscraper Man, also scaled several skyscrapers around the world. Next, creaking. Creaking is a type of canoeing and kayaking which involves descending very steep low volume white water. This sport is usually performed in specialized canoes and kayaks which can withstand the extreme white water environment. The specially designed kayaks give the paddler improved performance and extreme maneuverability needed for river obstacles. Creaking involves the descent of waterfalls and slides or any steep low volume river. The root characteristic of creaking can vary from very smooth granite like Cherry Creek in California to boulder gardens such as the Stein River in British Columbia. The creaking route usually includes seas, step drops, holes and undercuts. This type of kayaking is regarded as the most dangerous and extreme in comparison to other varieties of kayaking. Bungee jumping. Bungee jumping is an adventure, adventure sport that involves jumping from a tall structure while harnessed by a large elastic cord. The elevated structure from which bungee jumping takes place can be a building, bridge or crane, and can also be a hot air balloon or helicopter. Uh, 
The adrenaline rush from this sport comes from free falling and the rebound. The bungee cord stretches and the jumper flies upwards again as the cord recoils. When a person attempts bungee jumping and continues to oscillate up and down till all the kine uh, kinetic energy dissolves. The first modern bungee jumps were done by two members of the Oxford University Dangerous Sports Club, David Kirk and Simon Keeling, from the 250 and 50 foot Clifton suspension bridge in Bristol on the 1st of April 1979. Commercial bungee jumping was first organized by A.J. Hackett who made his first attempt from Auckland's Green Hyde Bridge in 1986. Volcano Boarding Volcano boarding or volcano surfing, or more commonly the ash boarding, is a type of adventure sport that involves ascending on the slopes of Cerro Negro near Leon in western Nicaragua. The volcano surfers climb up the volcano and then slide down on a thin plywood or metal board while sitting on uh, while sitting or standing. The volcano surfing uh, boards made by plywood are are reinforced by steel, metal or formica to provide required strength. This sport involves the danger of falling off and getting cut by the rough volcanic rocks. Cerro Negro is also an active volcano and had its, uh, its last eruption in 1999. Safety gear such as jumpsuits and goggles are often used by the surfers. This adventure sport was invented by an Australian living in Nicaragua, Darren Webb, in 2005 according to the Sabotage Times. Cave diving. Cave diving is adventure underwater diving in caves which are typically partially filled with water. The cave diving is done usually using the scuba equipment but often in a specialized configurations. This form of adventure sport is a form of penetration diving which means a cave diver cannot swim vertically to the surface in an emergency to, due to the cave's ceilings. Divers usually have to retreat the entire way back out. The five main contributing factors of the cave diving were popularized by the book called Basic Cave Diving, a blueprint for survival published by Sheck Exley in 1977. Jack Yves Cousteau is widely regarded as the first scuba cave diver, who is also the co-inventor of the first commercially successful open-circuit scuba equipment. In the United Kingdom, Jack Shefford made the first cave dive on the 4th of October in 1936 in the Man Deep Hills of Somerset. Wingsuit Flying Wingsuit flying is a type of extreme sport that involves flying through the air using a wingsuit. The wingsuit adds surface area to the flyer's body, which significantly increases the lift. The modern variation of wingsuit was first developed in the late 1990s, which created a surface area between the legs and under the arms with fabric. The wing suits are also referred as the Birdman suit, suits. 33-year-old Franz Raycott made the first attempt to wing, of wing suit flying from the Eiffel Tower on 4th February 1912. He failed on that attempt and hit the ground with his head. On the contrary, his autopsy showed that he died of a heart attack before hitting the ground. The first successful wingsuit was first used by Rex Finney, a 19-year-old American from Los Angeles, California, in 1930. French adventurist Patrick de Gaillardon first created the modern wingsuit in the mid-1990s. So, these are the most popular extreme sports around the world. And what are the most unusual extreme types of extreme sports? So let's watch the video and I'm sure you will be very, very surprised. Number 5. Ostrich Racing 
It may come to a surprise to many of you, but ostrich racing has been around since the times of the ancient Egyptians. Ostriches can reach intense speeds of 43 miles an hour, so it's certainly a little more fast paced than horse racing. Here we see two jockeys suited up at an annual ostrich racing festival in Arizona, and you better believe those helmets are going to come in handy. The guy in the blue helmet falls off pretty quickly, and it's quite the challenge to compete in this sport. First of all, you need an ostrich, which we imagine isn't easy to come by. And then you have to constantly put up with falling off these birds. And then when you do fall off, be prepared to get trampled on. Others might choose to go an easier route and take a chariot. Number 4. Extreme Ironing Ironing is no longer just for women and now becoming a much more extreme sport. Finding the most bizarre and unusual place to get this household chore done is now becoming somewhat of an extreme sport. This competitor here named Kevin hiked up the side of this cliff to make sure his t-shirt is wrinkle free. Some might perform these stunts on places like canoes, on top of a house, or even underwater like we see here. The first competition was actually held in a small village near Munich with three categories, urban, water, rocky, forest, and freestyle, where anything goes. Number 3. Volcano Snowboarding So you've looked into snowboarding and it just wasn't for you. You prefer things to be a little bit more heated up while you're risking your life. Well, it seems that volcano boarding could be right up your alley. Instead of cruising down a hill with snow, you're basically doing the same thing, but with volcanic ash. In 2015, photographers captured some images from people participating in this extreme sport on an erupting volcano in Indonesia. We'll hope this guy didn't fall down or get eaten up by hot lava. Number 2. Skyaking yeah, sure, we've heard of kayaking before, but that's for pure wussies. The only way to enjoy your time is on one of these plastic boats. The only way to enjoy your time on one of these plastic boats is by free falling 60 miles an hour after jumping out of an airplane that's 13,000 feet in the air. Wide kayaks are made to help add stability to free fallers, but there's certainly a lot of things that can go wrong here. Hardcore kayakers will pull their parachutes at twice the height of a normal parachuter just in case something goes wrong. The landing part seems to be the coolest as they try to normally land on some type of body of water. This photo shows a skyhacker named Miles who's been doing this for eight years and he's landing on a stream in Florida. And number one, mountain unicycling. Who wants to ride down a mountain with a bike these days? Ain't no one got time for two wheels. The only true extreme way to do this is to take a unicycle of course and reimagine it doesn't get too much crazier than this. This German adrenaline junkie gets a rush from being on top of a mountain with his unique skill of being able to ride a unicycle. This might include catching some serious air on the way down. Ever since extreme unicycles were made that can handle mountainous terrains, a subculture developed and you better believe they got some buff calves. Practicers of this sport claim that it's extremely physically demanding and it also requires people to use nearly every muscle in their body. Well, my friends, aren't these types of sports unusual? Well, that is all for today. I'm sure we know a lot about extreme sports. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.